Bonjour, bonjour. Welcome, everybody. This is yet a new uh, Sunday live session. So I am super happy to be seeing you again. I'm not sure what's going on with the frame, but I'm just going to teach like that because it will work, certainly. So I see there's already a ton of activity in the chat. We have Linda here and Connie and Cynthia who are just chatting away. So welcome, guys. So sweet to see you here again. Um, yeah, please tell me how you're doing. Uh, those of you who are in the French Accelerator, I know that some of you have signed up recently. Uh, Cynthia, you signed up a little moment ago, so please tell me how it's going. Um, and Connie with the French Life Launchpad, and well, Linda, I know how you're doing because you're my work wife or power behind the thrones or whichever job title you want to have. So yes, um, today the topic is seven hacks to learn vocabulary fast. We have already spoken about vocabulary a while ago, a few times, uh, I think already. Um, but this time I will sp focus specifically on speed. So there will be, of course, a couple of fundamentals that it never hurts to repeat because, well, you know, like being good at something is just mostly practicing the fundamentals and just knowing and doing the fundamentals really well. But I will also give you some new hacks that you might never have heard before um, that will help you learn more words faster. So if that sounds good, um, please uh, just uh, give me an uh, emoji or say yes or something like that. Um, I need to tell you that the prices for my one-on-one -on -one coaching, so both the French Transformation and the sessions for the French Accelerator students, uh, which if you're in the French Accelerator, you have received an email this week where I detailed that. Um, and if you're not, but if you're not in the French Accelerator and you're in my email list, you have received an email which explains the French transformation. But anyway, uh, you have one week left, well, exactly six days, right, until the end of July um, to get in touch with me if you would like to have one-on-one -on -one coaching. I still have two spots available, so I just wanted to remind you of this. And other than that, as usual, we have a worksheet. The worksheet is available for free on my Telegram channel. So if you haven't received it in your email and you don't have it yet, you can still get it from the Telegram channel. And if you're watching this in the far away, distant future, you can actually still get the worksheet from the Telegram channel. You just have to go to the file section. Uh, you know, you have to tap on my face and then scroll down and you will be, there will be a session with files and you will find all the worksheets over there. Um, we are going to keep the tradition of the French summary towards the end of this session, where I will summarize everything that I have taught uh, during this session. I will summarize it in French, so that will give you a little bit of a French bath at this moment. And we have the new tradition of the word of the day, which this time I have thought of ahead of time, and I have actually included two, not one, but two idioms of the day on the worksheet. So we will see what that means uh, a little bit later today. And I've also with some little drawings to help you remember the words. All right, so how are you guys doing? Like, I'm not sure what's going on with the chat. Oh yeah, okay, it's working. All right, um, let's get started. So how to learn vocabulary fast. Please tell me how is it going for you with vocabulary? Like, do you have particular challenges? Um, are particular things difficult for you? Because as usual, I will answer all the questions you have. If you have questions about vocabulary, I can answer them like as I am going through the content. And if you have questions that are about other topics, we can keep them for the end of the session. And there will normally be enough time or more than enough time for all the questions. So yeah, the first thing that I wanted to remind you, which is part of really the fundamentals, and you're probably tired of hearing me say it if you've been here for a while, but what you learn is more important than how you learn. Like This is really critical because not all words are created equal. So French, like most French words are actually completely irrelevant to you. Like you would never decide to go towards, like to try to learn a language by just opening the dictionary and learning it by heart. Like you, you know instinctively that that wouldn't work. There are many reasons why that doesn't work, but one of the reasons is because just the words that you need are very few words compared to uh, the French dictionary. Depending on how you count, there could be a hundred thousand words in the French dictionary. And if you have a thousand words, you will be able to have pretty much any conversation you need to have if you're just uh, traveling or staying for a short while in a country. And if you have 2,000 to 500 to 5,000 words, the, that's, that's the maximum that you really concretely need. So it's only on your small subset. And of course, even within that small subset, you can quote unquote 80-20. Uh, the, the, you can always basically 80-20 and really don't do what's most important. Like, 
I have shared before that the most important French word is bonjour, and that if you would only know bonjour, you would actually be better off than most people who don't know. Like, you would be a lot better off if you know only bonjour than someone who doesn't know any word. Because the reason is that when you approach a French person, if you do not start the interaction with bonjour, they will consider you to be rude. And so you will basically put them in a bad mood and they will not necessarily be uh, willing to help you if you don't start with bonjour. And of course, you didn't mean to be impolite, but you might not have known. So you will have so many, so much better results if you say bonjour, do you speak English to a French person? And if you just approach them and go, do you speak English? Like if you approach a French person, you go, do you speak English? That's rude. But if you say bonjour, do you speak English? They will consider you to be polite. And if they do speak English, they will actually probably be happy to help you. So you see how like with one word, you can unlock a lot of things. That's a bit of an extreme example. Uh, but I think it's very telling because, for example, uh, a lot of people will ask me about frequency lists, uh, if I think that frequency lists are a useful tool to learn. I think they can be made useful. It's not very useful on its own. But if you, um, I'm confused now, sorry. Yes, if you will have a frequency list and also uh, a good uh, class based on that frequency list, it could be useful. Uh, but in practice, the word bonjour is not the most frequent word of the French language. It's, I don't even know if it's in the 100 first most frequent words. So it's not about how frequent they are. It's about how useful they are to you. So basically, what you learn is more important than how long you learn. And it's also more important than how much you learn. Because with 10 well-chosen words, you can go a lot farther than with 1,000 words that are kind of irrelevant. That's also why I don't love the word of the days thing, even though you know, due to popular demand, I have integrated one into, this, uh, into these classes. But it's more of a fun thing to do. It's not so much a learn this particular word thing, because you have to learn the words that are most useful. Today, we have two idioms that are about memory. So it's not very useful things. It's more like some things that you could you know, go to a dinner and tell your friends, oh, yeah, I know the French, they say that. That would be a like, little parlor trick, I guess. So yeah, and that's what goes on the first line. What you learn is more important than how you learn or than how much you learn. And then uh, choose no more than 10 words per day. So I always recommend to all of my clients and students to never learn more than 10 words per day. Uh, a little bit later today, we will see what you could do to like, kind of like bypass this limit and how you could still learn more words than 10 words per day. But if you have a vocabulary notebook and you put 10 words per day in it and you learn those 10 words successfully, you will very quickly have enough vocabulary to be able to uh, hold conversations. So I was ahead of myself. Tip number two is to use a notebook. I'm sure you've heard that before. I have spoken about the notebook a lot. I would recommend, I actually had a realization this week when I was preparing this uh, particular class that I realized that the word notebook in English actually covers more reality than the word carnet in French, which is, I would call this un carnet in French. This here, this I would not call un carnet, I would call un cahier in French. So uh, let me just actually type those words in case you want to learn them. Un carnet versus un cahier. So this I would call un cahier and this I would call un carnet. And that's actually relevant because it's better if you have a small one for your vocabulary. And there are a number of reasons for that. If you have a small one, it's easier to carry it around. Like you can put it in your purse or even in your pocket if you have large pockets. Um, it, it's really easy to carry it around. And also, it will be full rather fast. And when it is full, you have an opportunity to review all the vocabulary, remove all the words that you wrote by mistakes, which turn out to be useless, and also remove all the words that you now know by heart. And then you can transfer the words that are left into the next notebook which you won't have as many opportunities to do that if you have something huge like this. So I would recommend always taking a small ones. It's just uh, a lot more light, literally, and more lean. And it's a better um, way to study vocabulary. All right, do you have any questions so far? I mean, it's probably nothing that you've, I mean, at least for the people who are live right now, it's probably only things that you've heard before uh, because those are really uh, fundamental things. The next thing I have on the list, uh, tip number three, is to create habits. And it can be really hard to create a habit at the beginning. 
And I should know because I have been terrible at creating habits or at keeping my habits recently. I just, it's harder for some people than for others, and it's harder for some habits than for others. But if you already have habits that are well in place, uh, if you, for example, do the same thing every day, like you, you know, go to work and wake up at the same time and things like that, it's very easy to sneak in a little vocabulary learning habits. Uh, and you will only need about five minutes per day or five minutes twice a day is even better. So if you had five minutes in the morning, like immediately after you get up, for example, uh, or even immediately after you wake up, like if you have the habit of waking up, picking your phone, you could try to insert the vocabulary in between. Like you wake up, you look at the vocabulary, then you pick up your phone. And the same thing at night before you sleep. The reason for that is that your brain is more relaxed and your brain waves are lower. So it's actually easier to learn uh, in the morning than and in, in the morning and in the evening than during the day. And also you're less likely to be caught up in something hectic, uh, which makes it easier to stick to your habit. So yes, there are many, uh, there are many uh, blanks in this page. So it's create habits. It can be hard at the beginning, but once it works, you need no willpower to continue. So that's the whole reason why you uh, want to have habits, if it, because you don't need as much willpower to do it than if you have to always, every day, make the decision and force yourself uh, to do it you know, forever and ever. But if you have a habit, it will become automatic. Five minutes twice a day is perfect. And the best times are in the morning and in the evening before you go to sleep. First thing in the morning, last thing uh, in the evening, because your brain will be in the alpha brainwave levels. Did I say beta before? I meant alpha. So you, know, you will have lower brainwaves. Four, uh, one thing that I don't know if I have shared before, but quiz yourself. Uh, so the best way to use a notebook, this is actually a terrible example of a notebook, but I bought it because it's really cute. It says, don't be afraid to be great. The best way that you can use your notebook is by doing this. I can actually just do it right away. Let me, I mean, assuming that I find a pencil. You want to do something like this. You want to draw a line in the middle, and then on the one side, you write the French words, and on the other side, you write either the English translation or something that allows you to remember the meaning of the French words. Just, you know, want to make sure that you will know what, what they mean and you'll be able to, to know it. And then you want to use something like a sheet of paper, you, you can keep actually a little sheet of paper in your notebook, you know, like half one, and then you can cover one half and you can look just at the French and guess the translation, or harder, look just at the translation and guess the French. And it's, it's kind of playful and it's a good way to check if you know it, because if you're just reading through your notebook, you might actually just be reading it, but you can't be sure that you know the words. So it might depend a little bit on uh, you, how anxious you are. I know that I'm a rather anxious person and I just really want to do the things like, the right way. So for me, quizzing myself when I want to learn something and if I want to learn something by heart, like vocabulary, it's really, really helpful. All right, Linda is saying, I piggybacked mine onto other habits in the morning with the first cup of tea and in the evening before I read, before I go to sleep. Yes, so that's basically exactly how you want to do it. So there's this uh, technique which is called habit stacking or sometimes habit piggybacking. So you take a, a habit that you already have. For example, for Linda, you have a first cup of tea in the morning. When your cup of tea is ready or when you are boiling the water for your cup of tea, you pick your notebook and you read through it. I have, for example, a client who uh, makes drip coffee in the morning every day. So she presses the button for her coffee to drip. And while it's dripping, she opens the notebook and she reads through it. Uh, that is the kind of thing like that. Or before you go to sleep, you know that at some point you're going to lie down and you know, hopefully shortly after you're going to sleep, you can do it in between lying down and sleeping or right before lying down. That's the way that you can stack your habits. So it can be a little bit different for every person. You need to adjust it to your routine, of course. But the, the best, the more tailored it is to your existing lifestyle, the easier it will be to uh, keep a new habit. So then the fifth one is something that I already shared before because it's super important. And I have actually not seen anyone other than me speak about it. And that makes me a little mad because it's super counterintuitive. And I actually wrote it as uh, it's super counterintuitive it, because it takes more time to write it all down and a bit more effort to learn. But then you can seamlessly use the word in sentences and you save a lot of time on the long run. So the thing is, you need to learn all of the important data, like all the peripherals, quote unquote, 
for every new word that you learn. So you can use this thing, which I prepared. It's part of the French Francis starter kit. You have the link in the description. Um, I believe, I hope so. Otherwise, it's frenchfrancy.net slash starter kit. It's really easy to find it. Uh, when you sign up for the starter kit, you will also get my e emails regularly. So I also send you all the worksheets for the future uh, YouTube classes. But this thing, uh, it's pretty useful. It's called Vocabulary Magic. And it contains everything you need to know about learning vocabulary. For example, there's one page, which is the vocabulary notebook do and don't. So you know exactly how to use the vocabulary notebook. It's the kind of thing that I just shared it here and a bit more, but I condense on one page. It's faster to read. And then on all the other pages, you have all the peripherals, all the data. I don't really know how to what word to use, like the information, like basically the things that go with the words. And in English, you don't really have that. Like, I guess, for example, if you have an irregular verb, you could write down the way that it's irregular. But irregular verbs are just a small fraction of the English language. And you know, nouns have sometimes irregular plural, but it's not frequent. While in French, it's very frequent for it's almost every single word that has something that you need to remember about it. And so, for example, take a word like la maison. So here it's it's represented with sticky notes, but you can do and you should do the exact same thing in your vocabulary notebook. So take a word like la maison. Um, maison is feminine. If you write just maison, unless you know that maison is always feminine, which happens to be for this case, but it's not going to always be the case that the uh, that the ending gives away the gender. So you need to write down always an article that allows you to remember the gender. So la maison or le matin. Right, so you have the uh, the gender, and you can underline the ending if the ending gives away the gender, and you know it, and you want to remember. Like for example, if we have had a one-on-one -on -one session together, and you were like, "Wait, is it la maison or le maison?" and I said, "Well, it's la maison," and all the words in maison are always feminine, like la saison, la salaison, la pendaison, la raison, etc. Then you, you can just you know underline it and be like, "Oh yeah, like that's the ending that's always feminine." Right, so this is, for example, for nouns. You have some nouns that have a masculine version and a feminine version. I strongly recommend writing both, um, especially if you're not really used to the pattern. So for example, here I have le coiffeur. I'm not sure if you can see it because it's really dark. Le coiffeur and la coiffeuse. So that means hairdresser. And that is the masculine version and the feminine version of the same noun. And if you... Most masculine nouns in er will have a feminine in eus, but not all of them. And so if you, especially if you don't know the pattern, it's helpful at the beginning to write them both. Because otherwise, you, you, know, you have a female hairdresser, so you write it as la coiffeuse, the hairdresser. And next thing you know, you want to speak about the male hairdresser, and you don't know how to say it. So write them both. It takes a little bit more time, but it will save you so much time on the long run. Sometimes you have irregular plural, is particularly the case with the words in al, so le journal, that means the newspaper, uh, it becomes les journaux. So that's also the kind of thing that you want to write down so that you know uh, that it is the, uh, the different ending. So once you want to put it in plural, then you will know how to put it in plural and you won't have that kind of problems. And then things happen even more with adjectives because they always have a masculine and a feminine version. Sometimes it's a normal one, so like for petit, for example, I didn't write the feminine because it's petit with an E, and that's the normal uh, situation. But for example, if you take Italian, right, that means Italian, uh, it becomes Italian, which you have to double the N. So that's also a pattern which is regular, so maybe you're advanced enough to know that it's always is Italian will become Italian, just like chien will become chienne, uh, and all the words in ending in un have this pattern, but if you don't know it yet, then write it down. Um, then you have irregular plural, same thing. And then you have some particular ones like vieux that has actually three options because it's vieux in masculine before a consonant, VA in masculine before a vowel, and VA with double E, double L E uh, in feminine. So that's the kind of things that you, you want to write down in your notebook. Verbs, maybe even like up a notch because you have to learn the conjugation. Sometimes if there is a conjugation that's super irregular, you can write the entire conjugation. One advantage of having a small notebook is that you can sometimes take like an entire page for a verb, for example, if the conjugation is complicated. Or you can take an entire page to make lists, which I will tell you about later because I'm ahead of myself. But a thing that at the very least when you write a verb, you want to write the type. 
uh, unless you know, like for example, arrive, like if it's an ER verb, you know how to conjugate the ER verbs, then you're fine. But if, for example, it's a verb in IR, there are actually probably more than two types. There are two main types, but there are different ways. And so, for example, nourrir, we know that it's like finir. Uh, well, we know. I know it. Maybe you don't. So you might want to write it down. Comprendre is like prendre. And that's the kind of thing, like, it's obvious if you really have the mindset of, of knowing, okay, what's the ending and which verb looks like it. But it takes a little bit of practice to become able to do this automatically. So as long as it's not automatic, you want to write it down because then when you review it every day, then that's when it becomes automatic. So does this make sense? I see there's a discussion about coffee going on. How can you function before coffee or tea? My eyes are not really open until the second cup. And then, oh, well, then do yours with the second cup. Yeah, that actually great, great discussion. Like if you know you're not awake, before you have had your tea or coffee, then it's not a good idea to try to do the vocabulary before. Uh, it's, it's unfortunate, but then, yes, like as soon as you know your eyes are open, that's when you want to do the, the vocabulary. Of course, that's what I mean with you need to adapt it uh, to your own personal situation. So, yes, the five was learn all the peripherals for every new word. Strongly recommend downloading the vocabulary magic so that you know what peripherals you need uh, for the word. And of course, if we are in a session, I will give you all of that. If we, if we do one-on-one -on -one coaching together, which by the way, still repeating it, but I still have two, spot, two, uh, two spots and um, the price will increase at the end of this week. So if you are considering uh, getting one-on-one -on -one coaching with me now is really the best time to do it. You want to check out the, the link in the description and just you know click through it and book a call with me so you can get in uh, before the 1st of August. Um, and yes, so uh, if we are doing one-on-one -on -one coaching, I will give you all the peripherals and tell you, okay, like this is the article, this is the ending that gives you a, a, the gender away, or like this verb has this type and so on, and this is how you conjugate it. But if you are learning more autonomously, or even if you're in the French accelerator, you, you might need to either find it out by yourself, or uh, if you are not sure, you can bring the words here and I can uh, tell you, uh, you know, it, like those sessions are here for that. So as long as we don't have too many people and too many questions, you can bring any questions, you can bring any word and be like, okay, like how do I write this one in the notebook? And then I will just tell you live uh, and probably write in the chat how to, to write it. All right, so uh, we have a question from Lebona. Hi, Lebona. Is it generally good for one to learn the vocabulary before or is it more effective if I have someone with whom I practice with or is it mutually inclusive? I'm not sure what you mean with learn the vocabulary before. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I understand the exact question. Um, do you mean to ask if it is better to learn vocabulary before practice or to wait for the practice to learn the vocabulary with the person? Because that, that will greatly depend on how you work, the, the ways that you learn. For example, I don't ask my students, my one-on-one -on -one students, to learn vocabulary or to look up vocabulary before the sessions with me. But I do have some students who like to do it. So if it's the way that you know you learn best this way, I strongly encourage to do it. Uh, otherwise, if you know that it will be more, um, that it will, that it will be more beneficial for you to get the words from the person and the person is competent and is willing to help you and it is you know like the safe space in which you practice then you can do it this way and you can do both like you can you can mix and match so there's no like i find that very often we wonder okay what is most efficient but often what is most efficient is what will work best for you so just just try it if it doesn't work you can change it up um the really like the things like the pitfalls are things like just not learning the peripherals, for example, because sometimes you just don't know. Uh, most teachers never mention it. I don't know why, honestly. I'm just it, it baffles me why they don't do it. Uh, and then you can be really stuck, or uh, yeah, or things like not learning any grammar, which sometimes I have students who come to me and they're already kind of very advanced, actually, like way higher than intermediate levels, um, but they have. A completely broken grammar or no grammar at all and then we have to like backtrack and learn the grammar from scratch so that can be frustrating for the students like for me like i don't care it's my job like bring me whichever pro problem you have if you're my one-on-one -on -one client i'll find a way to fix it um, but it can make you waste a lot of time at the beginning and just feel bad about yourself because you're not understanding why it doesn't work so that that kind of things just happen but yeah uh cynthia saying you just came on my 
screen for some reason lost the first part of today yeah uh, the reason is that youtube is really annoying and youtube is uh, deciding randomly to mention things to people and i guess because i have a little a few more viewers now youtube is like oh people are interested after all so i'm gonna show it to the other people who were interested before uh cynthia i strongly recommend you uh join the telegram channel and maybe even like mark your calendar or something or ask for reminders like the best thing that you could do perhaps uh, the easiest on YouTube is to click the bell, like you need to click subscribe. And even if you have already subscribed, just click the little bell uh, next to my name. And then hopefully, hopefully YouTube will send you notifications. Uh, but honestly, like whenever there's something, some live on YouTube that I really want to attend, I just put it in my calendar because I do not trust YouTube. Like the best thing I can say, unfortunately. Um, yeah, you, you can catch the replay of the beginning later, or you can listen to the summary in French later and see how that works for you. Uh, Lebanon is saying, thank you, taken. I hope to be better by September. If not, then I employ a different technique. Yep, you can try. You can give yourself a certain amount of time um, to uh, to use a technique and then, then see what happens. Yes. OK, oh, speaking of September, I, I wasn't planning on telling you this, but you just mentioned September. And so I'm like, I, I should say that now. Um, we will have, like, it was going to be the second anniversary of the French Fancy Accelerator. And in September, I, I will basically do this twice a year from now on. Once in September, or like August, September, and once in January, there will be an intake of students for the scholarship program. So if you are interested in joining the program, but you don't have the financial um, resources to be able to pay the tuition, you can actually apply for a scholarship. You will have to go to, um, I will share the links later because you have the whole month of August to organize that. Uh, but if you want to already do it, you can go to my uh, website and to the page of the accelerator, and then you have to look through the page where it says buy one, give one, then there's the link to, to apply there. It's not easy to find because I haven't promoted it uh, so far, but that's going to be like the thing that I'm going to focus on in August. So if you're interested in that and you want to have a head start, you, you can actually already do it. It's, it's technically possible. And then we will give, uh, or I will give as many scholarships as the number of students who have signed up for the French Fancy Accelerator between, uh, or either signed up or renewed a, a pre-existing subscription between January and, well, when we do it. So between January and September of this year. So if you have already signed up for the French Fancy Accelerator, I, I, am, I have not forgotten that I will give a scholarship like, you know, for each person who signs up. It's just that we are still working on it and collecting the applications and the, the, there will be like two students intake per year uh, for the scholarships. So if you want a scholarship, now is a good time to start thinking of what you're going to write in, in that application. That was a little uh, break, just because you mentioned September. Um, number six is learning in chunks. So chunks is basically a phrase, and a phrase is easier to remember and easier to reuse. So sometimes it's good to have a verb together with a noun. For example, in English, you would never say do a crime, you would say commit a crime. So similarly in French, you would not say faire un crime, you would say commettre un crime. And those are the kind of like chunks that you can write and it will be easier. Or for example, one of my favorite chunks is je voudrais. And you would can write je voudrais and then I would like next to it. And this is actually conditional. It's quite a complicated conjugation. Like if you want to, if you want to like surgically analyze how this uh, conjugation comes to be, it's a, it requires a lot of grammatical um, knowledge. But the good news is that you don't actually need any of that knowledge to be able to use it. Just write je voudrais, write I would like next to it. And next time you're in France or in some French speaking situation and you want to ask for anything, like for example, if you're in a cafe, you go je voudrais un café, je voudrais un thé, and that's really, really easy. So this is learning in chunk. It's super helpful um, to just you know learn the bit of phrase that you will know you will need all the time. And my last thing, which I might never actually have shared here, I don't think I have, it's to make lists of similar words. Now, this is, it's, this is a, a tip that's super exciting because it's the one thing that actually could allow you to bypass the uh, 10 words a day limit. So let me just get a sip of water and I'll explain to you how it works. So for example, a, and if you have a small notebook, you can take a page and write like the title of a list and then write the list. A list that I always tell my students, my one-on-one -on -one students to make, or almost always, is to make the list of the verbs that take the preposition a, 
because it's honestly almost impossible to know when to use which preposition in French and also in English. Uh, one day I said, I don't remember to whom, maybe to Lina, that I was flying off the seat of my pants. Pants. I just, I don't know, I thought that was the expression. Uh, then I, later I learned that the expression is flying by the seat of my pants, which I was like, that doesn't really make any sense. It's more logical that we fly off of it. <laughs> but it's just like, you know, don't go question the language, like the prepositions are what they are. It, the, the reason why I tell you this is because you actually can't really know. I don't know how many mistakes I make in English with the prepositions. I think I'm quite fluent with it, but it might just be that no one ever corrects me and I'm just keep making the same mistakes and I keep thinking that it's correct. Um, in order to avoid some of these mistakes, like you almost, you can't really weed them completely out. I suspect that I still make some in English. I know I make a lot of them in German, um, but you can reduce the amount of mistakes that you make. And one good solution is to make just a list of the verbs, or sometimes it works also with adjectives that require the preposition a. So, continuer a, commencer a, uh, s'engager a, faire quelque chose. Um, now I'm not just not going to find them on top of my head because I didn't write them down. Uh, penser a, for example. You can also make a list of the verbs that have de, like parler de, rêver de, finir de, faire quelque chose, and so on and so forth. That can be really helpful if you're towards the uh, upper intermediate moment of learning uh, and you already know those verbs that you're, you're not sure about the preposition. One of the best ways to know them is to learn them all together because then your brain will associate the verbs together and you'll know that what they have in common is the preposition. You could decide, for example, to make a list of nouns that are feminine, like, you know, feminine nouns, masculine nouns. It depends a little bit on how you learn. If you're a person who learns with lists really easily, you can make an endless uh, amount of lists just according to like which words are, have something in common. And one great list that you can have, or try, type of list, is the word family, families. So the words that have the same roots. So for example, if you learn the verb écrire, which means to write, you can also learn un écrivain, which is a writer, or une écriture, which is a handwriting, uh, or a writing style that could be either. Or for example, if you learn rire, which means rire, which means to laugh, you can learn un rire, which is a laughter, or, and you can learn sourire, which is, you know, under laugh, that means to smile, and un sourire is a smile. So with this, you can kind of uh, stretch a little bit the limit of the 10 words, because one word family will count as almost just one word in your brain. So if you really, really want to learn words fast, I strongly recommend learning words families at once, because it gives you way more words uh, than you would ever have if you learn them independently. So yep, that's basically uh, all the tips that I had planned for today. If you have any questions about this, uh, about learning with your vocabulary in general, please go ahead and ask. And while you are typing the questions, potential questions, if you have some, we can speak about the idioms of the day. So on the worksheet, I've put those two little animals. And this is a, a linnet. I actually learned the word uh, linnet this week because I didn't know what it was called in English. So in French, it's called une linotte. And as you see, what's specific with the linotte is that it has a really, really small head. And I have a hard time not saying she because une linotte is feminine in French. And so for me, um, it's a bit like giraffes and panthers. I think all of the animals of that species are female, but I don't genuinely think that. It's not like, it's not like I have a personal opinion of those, all those animals being female. It's just, I default them to female in my head. Uh, just because it's feminine in French, and especially when I was small, like little French kids tend to have issues understanding that grammatical gender is separate from biological gender. And so, for example, one thing that puzzled me to no end uh, when I was a child was Mickey Mouse. Because Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse are just uh, very heteronormative in the way that they are drawn. And in French, regardless, it's une souris. And it took me a certain number of, like, a certain amount of, like, maturity and just uh, older age to become able to understand that actually not all mouse, uh, not all mice are female, that there are also male mice. And then in this case, it's une souris mal in French, but it's always une souris because it's always feminine. Uh, and the same thing happened. Like I thought that the panther Bagheera in the Jungle Book, the Book of the Jungle, I'm not sure how you call it in English, but you see what I mean, right? The Disney movie with Mowgli. I thought, I thought for my entire time that Bagheera was probably a female. Um, now I realize that he speaks with a male voice and that didn't really make any sense, but it's une panthère. And therefore, like, 
for me, it took me a while until I realized that it was, yeah, like those animals also have males and females. The Jungle Book, right. So same for Unli Not. Uh, I assume there are also males of this species, but uh, it is a, a little bird that is always feminine. And we have the expression une tête de linot, a une tête de linot, that means literally a linnet head. And that means someone who forgets uh, things easily because we think that because they have a small head, uh, they are forgetful. It's a very, um, it's very, um, how do you say that in English? It's like, it's a quick judgment, basically. I mean, there's no relation between a small head and uh, being forgetful, but that's what we think. So une tête de linot is a someone who is very uh, forgetful. Um, Cynthia is saying, I'm on Telegram, the bell was on YouTube, but no notification. I turned in and the screen was just black for a while. Oh, that is, that is not normal. That is really weird. I'm sorry, I don't have either an explanation or, like, did anyone else notice? Um, did anyone else notice that the screen went black or was it just Cynthia? Uh, Lebon is saying stereotype, right, thank you. So that's a stereotypical uh, way of judging, like, you know, small head equals forgetful or perhaps a bit dumb or not really smart. Um, I found that in English you can say having a blonde moment. I guess if you have lots of blonde moments, that, and then it means you're in tête de linotte. And the opposite of the linotte, which has the very small head, is the animal with the very big head, which is an elephant, right? So you could have une mémoire d'éléphant. And these are all the tips that can help you have une mémoire, une mémoire d'éléphant. I think you say that also in English as well, uh, like an elephant's memory. Do you say something like that? Like basically, it means that you never forget anything or you remember very easily. So those are two, the two French idioms of the week. Une tête de linot et une mémoire d'éléphant. I might have only one next week. I was just uh, thinking uh, this week, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to have one for the two aspects of the spectrum of what we are speaking about. You say an elephant never forgets. Yeah, so in French, we say avoir une mémoire d'éléphant. So it's not exactly, um, exactly a translation, but it's the same idea. All right, so do you have any questions or should I get into the French summary? Just tell me if you're, if you're ready, if you're like appropriately warmed up for the French summary. And I will try to speak a little more slowly than I did last time. All right, okay, so I just think I will need those notes. I don't have notes in French. It's a bit of a challenge for me to read notes in English and um, and to speak in French. But I'm up for it. Donc, aujourd'hui, Tony is saying the elephant in the room. Yeah, we don't really say that in French. Uh, L'éléphant dans la pièce, like it's it's very it's very English. It's a very English expression. Um, yep. All right. Nice to see you, Tony. By the way. Okay. Donc, you're, tu, es juste, tu arrives juste à temps pour le résumé en français. Donc, aujourd'hui, on parle de euh, sept trucs qu'on peut utiliser pour apprendre le vocabulaire français ou d'ailleurs le vocabulaire de n'importe quelle langue rapidement, ou du moins le plus rapidement possible. Donc, la première chose dont j'ai parlé, et c'est vraiment quelque chose dont je parle souvent, c'est vraiment très fondamental, c'est très important de toujours faire ça. Euh, c'est la première chose que vous devez faire dès que vous commencez à apprendre le français, ou en tout cas pour le vocabulaire, c'est de comprendre que ce que vous apprenez, c'est plus important, ce que vous apprenez, c'est plus important que comment vous apprenez et aussi combien vous apprenez. C'est vraiment important de sélectionner les mots qui sont le plus utiles parce que la manière la plus rapide d'apprendre le vocabulaire rapidement, c'est d'apprendre peu de vocabulaire. Donc, c'est pour ça qu'on a la limite de 10 mots par jour parce que euh, si on a plus de 10 mots par jour, si on écrit plus de 10 mots par jour dans son carnet, ça va devenir très compliqué de faire passer tous les mots dans le cerveau. Et le but du jeu, c'est que le carnet, ça, ça soit une sorte de, euh, de, euh, de porte pour votre cerveau. En fait, une sorte, il y a une sorte de... Il y a tout le français qui est à l'extérieur et il y a les mots qui arrivent dans le carnet et ensuite ces mots-là sont transférés dans le cerveau. Donc c'est pour ça qu'on n'en a pas plus que 10 par jour. Le deuxième truc, c'était d'utiliser... Un carnet, donc je viens d'en parler. Quand on utilise un carnet, c'est utile d'avoir une ligne au milieu et d'avoir le français d'un côté et soit la traduction ou l'explication de l'autre côté parce que ça, ça nous permet de cacher... Et voilà, maintenant, je ne peux plus cacher. Ça nous permet de cacher une partie de la page pour pouvoir faire des petits quiz. Et j'ai trop avancé, ça, c'était le point 4. Le point 4, c'était les quiz. 
Le point numéro 3, c'est de créer des habitudes. Et alors, les habitudes, c'est un petit peu difficile au départ parce que euh, ben, c'est difficile de mettre en place une habitude, tout simplement. Alors, une bonne technique, c'est ce qu'on appelait en anglais « piggyback ». En fait, c'est d'accrocher la nouvelle habitude à une habitude que vous avez déjà. Par exemple, si vous buvez un café le matin, vous pouvez regarder votre, euh, vous réviser votre vocabulaire en même temps que vous buvez votre café. La meilleure manière d'apprendre le vocabulaire, c'est cinq minutes le matin quand on se réveille et cinq minutes le soir avant de dormir. Parce que quand on se lève, quand on se réveille et avant de dormir, c'est le moment où on a des ondes assez basses dans le cerveau, les ondes alpha. Et les ondes alpha, c'est plus propice à l'apprentissage. Donc, c'est pour ça que c'est très utile euh, d'apprendre le vocabulaire le matin et le soir pour installer les mots dans la mémoire à long terme. Comme je disais, le point 4, c'est euh, de vous faire des petits quiz. Donc, vous pouvez cacher une partie. Vous pouvez même, like, si, vous, si votre carnet est assez petit, euh, vous pouvez cacher une partie des, des mots avec votre main, carrément. Et euh, vous pouvez lire le mot français et deviner la traduction, ou même à l'inverse, lire la traduction et deviner le mot français. Ça vous permet de vous faire des petits quiz euh, très facilement. Une erreur à ne pas faire, euh, je vois souvent des gens qui écrivent les, les, les mots sans avoir la ligne au milieu. Donc, ils écrivent tout seulement d'un côté. Le problème, c'est que si vous faites ça, vous n'allez pas pouvoir cacher une partie parce que ce ne sera pas toujours au même endroit. Donc, vraiment, commencez par faire une ligne au milieu de la page et ensuite le français d'un côté et l'anglais de l'autre. Ça, ça vous permettra d'utiliser votre carnet de manière beaucoup plus efficace. Le cinquième chose dont j'ai déjà parlé, mais qui est très important, c'est d'apprendre toutes les données importantes pour les nouveaux mots. Donc, pour ça, vous pouvez utiliser ce document. C'est un PDF qui fait partie du Starter Kit le kit de démarrage euh, de euh, French Fluency. C'est très difficile à dire en anglais parce qu'on n'a pas de mots en français euh, pour Fluency. Euh, mais en tout cas, euh, le kit de démarrage, ça contient ce PDF et aussi d'autres ressources. Et là-dedans, vous avez tous les mots, euh, toutes les, les données importantes euh, de chaque mot ou tous les types euh, de données importantes pour euh, les types de mots. Donc, par exemple, vous avez une page pour les noms, une page pour les adjectifs, une page pour les verbes. Et enfin, une page pour des, des petites expressions. Et ça, c'était le point numéro 6, 6 c'est-à-dire d'apprendre des groupes de mots, pas seulement des mots tout seuls. Donc, par exemple, une expression qu'on pourrait avoir, c'est « prendre une douche » ou « faire du sport euh, » ou euh, « libre comme l'air »,« like free as a bird » en français, on dit « libre comme l'air ». Et donc, tout ça, c'est des phrases qui sont plus utiles, euh, qui sont très utiles de se rappeler. Et si euh, vous écrivez des phrases entières, ou pas des phrases, mais des expressions ou des groupes de mots entiers, ce sera plus facile euh, d'apprendre à utiliser ces mots. Et un exemple que j'ai donné aujourd'hui, c'était « je voudrais ».« Je voudrais », c'est vraiment très utile parce que vous pouvez toujours l'utiliser pour faire une requête ou pour demander quelque chose à quelqu'un. C'est très poli et c'est très simple d'apprendre juste « je voudrais ». Par contre, si vous voulez apprendre toute la grammaire pour construire euh, l'expression « je voudrais », là, c'est compliqué parce que c'est le conditionnel et c'est juste, c'est pas simple d'apprendre tout le conditionnel. Mais vous pouvez apprendre seulement « je voudrais » et ça, c'est très utile et très rapide. Donc, ça, c'est pour ça que les, euh, les chunks, les expressions euh, sont très, très puissantes. Et enfin, la dernière chose, euh, le point numéro 7, ça, ça vous permet d'augmenter euh, le nombre de mots que vous pouvez apprendre dans une journée vous pouvez aller un petit peu au-delà de 10 mots par jour si vous faites ça. Et c'est de faire des listes de mots qui sont similaires. Par exemple, tous les verbes qui ont la préposition « à », comme « commencer à »,« continuer à »,« penser à »,« rêver à », etc. Ou les verbes qui ont la préposition « de », comme « parler de »,« rêver de »,« finir de », etc. Et un autre type de liste qui est vraiment très utile, c'est de faire des familles de mots. Donc, écrire les familles de mots les mots qui ont la même racine. Par exemple, on a le verbe écrire et la personne qui écrit, c'est un écrivain. Et la chose, euh, la, le, le résultat euh, de, de ce qu'on écrit, c'est l'écriture. Ou alors, on a le rire et on a le verbe rire. Et on a le sourire et le verbe sourire. Et en français, en fait, vous avez toujours des mots qui font partie de la même famille. Donc, quand je travaille avec mes étudiants euh, en, en cours individuel, J'aime beaucoup euh, donner des mots de la même famille ou donner plusieurs manières d'exprimer la même chose parce que ça, ça permet de varier ce qu'on apprend et ça permet d'aller un petit peu au-delà de la limite des 10 mots euh, par jour si vous trouvez que 10 mots par jour, c'est pas assez. Euh, moi, je trouve quand même que 10 mots par jour, c'est bien assez, c'est déjà beaucoup. 
Si vous apprenez 10 mots par jour et vous les apprenez vraiment, vous pouvez très rapidement avoir beaucoup de vocabulaire. Et après, euh, ça, je ne l'ai pas dit dans, dans le cours en anglais, mais en fait, c'est plus important d'être capable de d'être capable d'utiliser les mots que de savoir les mots. So I'm actually just going to uh, say this in English because I haven't said it before. And it's really important. It is more important to have words that you're able to use than to have many words. Because if you're not actually able to use those words, if you're not able to speak with those words, there's actually no benefit in knowing them. And all the people that I know who are learning French, they have a lot more French in their head than French that they are able to use. That's not a problem. That's actually normal. And it's even true for myself. If I read a book in French, there are many words in that book uh, that I, I mean, if it's like a, a book that has something technical about it, or it's, it's a book that I used to learn something, or it's a book that is written in a very literary um, style, then I will have a lot more words that I understand than words that I actually use in my daily life. This is normal for everybody. It is normal for the languages that you learn and is normal for your native language as well. But the thing is, if you have more, if you have a lot of words in your head and you don't have enough words to speak, that is a problem, of course, because like for me, I'm sure I understand a lot more words in English uh, than words that I'm able to use to speak to you, but I'm still able to express myself fluently. And most of the time I do find the words that mean what I mean to say. So. Yeah, it is, um, it is really important to be able to use those words. So the, the notebook is just sort of an intermediate time and you have to take the notebook and then put it in your head. And then during your practice time, during your safe practice time, which we haven't spoken too much uh, about today because it's a different topic. But when you're practicing, that's when you want to use those words and learn to reuse them. Or if you write homework or if you're journaling in French, it's a good idea to reuse the new words that you have learned for uh, for the new words that you have learned recently in your journaling or in your homework. I strongly uh, incite my students when we work one-on-one -on -one to also do that. OK, so Cynthia is saying summary for me. I'm not exactly sure if that's a request or a comment. So if it's a question or a request, can you please rephrase it? Um, yes. And if you have any questions, we still have about a uh, 15 minutes, and we have covered everything we had. Uh, so I'm happy to answer any question. Or you know to just chat like if there's anything you'd like to share uh, about your experience or in general or if you're completely completely melted like me i just went for a walk i was so melted that's why i was late by a couple of minutes because i was like i need to splash some water on my face I was like, um but yes so please go ahead and share anything you'd like to share or ask if there are things you'd like to ask and tony's saying it's important to be decisive and not pray wait what prevaricate when speaking I'm sorry, I do not know this word. Please teach me a vocabulary. Prevaricate, is that a real thing? So I, I've shared before that when a word ends in eight in English, you can remove the eight and put an ER instead. But I promise you, uh, prevariquer or prevariquer, I don't think it's a French word. So let's see, what does that mean? Um, according to the dictionary, it means to avoid telling the truth or saying exactly what you think. Right. So yeah, I understand what you mean. It's um, be indecisive. OK, so yeah, 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 it is. It's important to be decisive. As often, I find that the problem with practice is much um, more Ill anxiety or some mental blocks as it is a problem of pure vocabulary or pure even grammar or ability to speak French. There are people who are able to write in French a lot more than they are able to speak. And that just doesn't even really make sense. Uh, well, I mean, except if it takes you a really long time to make a sentence. But um, most of the time, if you're able to write, it means you're also able to speak, but you could have a certain uh, anxiety or, or mental block to that. And the short solution is to just do it. But if you're there and you're not really able to just do it, that doesn't help you. Um, a bit of a longer uh, term solution is to really have a space where you're safe and have someone that's encouraging you. And that's part of what I do with the French transformation is I, I just, just I provide the space and you know the understanding and as much help as I can to make it as smooth to make the experience of the student as smooth as I can. And again, it's something that I have found that not all teachers do. Um, especially if you've had French in, in school, I have so many people who have told me, oh my God, like the, the teachers were, either the teachers were not great or the teachers were good, but the environment was, was terrible. So yeah, Linda is saying, eat me. 
it's not just you, it's practically every single one of my students. So if you're feeling, oh my God, like he's speaking specifically about me. No, no, it's, it's, it's very widespread. It's a very, very common um, situation. So yeah, do you have anything that I can help you with before we hop off? Oh, by the way, French Accelerator students, especially if you are still here, um, Cynthia in particular, I have just, uh, actually Linda has just sent it, sent it but uh, I have finished this week the exercise for next live class. The next live class that we have is on Saturday. If you are not currently a member of the French Accelerator, I strongly, rec and you want to join that live class, I strongly recommend signing up now so I can actually send you, uh, I, like if I find a sign up, as soon as I find it, I will send the exercise to the student uh, who signed up per email so that you can uh, prepare it before the class. I strongly recommend taking some time to prepare the answers because then you will have something to speak about uh, in, in the class. We are speaking about a little uh, short movie which is called Un Monde Sans Rap. So that will be a world without rap music. It's not actually about rap music at all. And um, the story goes, I don't know if I should tell you about the story actually, because there are questions that are before you have watched the movie. Um, but yeah, basically it's, it's uh, I'll, I'll try to not spoil you too much. It's a person who hates rap and he wishes that rap would not exist, that rap never existed. And then it comes true. And so then he gets to witness how the world is different uh, without rap. And it turns out that it's not better. Like I'm just going to, tell you this. And then we're going to uh, study, like as we always do in the French Accelerator, I have prepared an exercise. I think it's seven or eight pages um, of questions. But don't, don't freak out. It's not small written, like there's room for the answers. Um, but I, I do, I did look for a lot of questions like I always do, because I also want to, in, to introduce a mix of easy questions and hard questions. If you do not find the answer to every question, it's normal. I do not expect any of the any of my students, even the most advanced and the most practiced, to find all the answers because it's I, it's not impossible. Of course, I mean I made it possible to find them, but it's it's challenging, and especially that some are harder than others. So please don't try to force yourself to find all the answers. It will really frustrate you. But try to find as many as you can. Like just make that a little game of uh, understanding how much is going on in, in the movie and finding as many, uh, there's a lot of questions about the, the language. The movie contains a lot of slang, so you have the opportunity to learn a bunch of uh, slang words in French if you want to. And then, um, it's a pity I don't have a print here, um, I can't change, so it show it to you. But uh, we have some of those exercises are just a list of words from the, from the movie and then a list of signification on the other hand, and you have to connect them. Uh, you can try to look them up on Google or in the dictionary if that helps. Like I strongly recommend using any tool uh, that you can use. Like nothing is really cheating. Of course, if you want to jog your memory uh, more or jog your brain more, you can try to not do it. Um, but it's totally okay to Google away and to look things in the dictionary and so on. It's it's not cheating and it's not even making it much easier for you. Um, one of the reasons why I do it this way is because I consider that the goal isn't so much to find the answer as to become able to find the answer. So all the tools that you have, which you can use are welcome to, to be used. Well, I mean, a bit of a difference would be if you'd ask someone else to do it in your stead, because then that wouldn't really be you doing it. Uh, but asking for help would be totally fine, like a bit of help. So yep, those are the French Transy Accelerator news. Uh, I actually share the um, the movie, I shared it on my Telegram channel. So if you're not in the Accelerator and you want to check out the movie, you can still do that. It's on it's on the channel. All right, so it's almost time for me to sign off. If you have something that you would like to say or ask, or if you would like to request something, now is a good time. All right, Tony is saying the French summary works. I actually haven't, oh yeah, I haven't asked you, like how did the French summary go? Thank you, Tony, for reminding me. Please tell me if, uh, if it worked for, for most of you. The French summary works well for me. It is good to be able to confirm that I've picked up the main point in French. Yep, yeah, no, I think it's a, it was a great idea. I don't remember who I did, it wasn't me. It was someone who suggested um, me speaking French. And yes, we'll keep doing that. Um, it's, um, it's, I think, helpful and it allows you to, put things more in your long-term memory. If you hear something in two different languages, you will remember it more easily. So yep, we are, we're gonna keep 
uh, doing that. All right. Um, it's almost 8 p.m. here. I was late by a couple of minutes, so I can still stick around if there's any question, but please type it in now or otherwise, you know, I'll just thank you for being here and for sticking with me week after week. That is really cool. That keeps encouraging me to show up and to find new things to share. Uh, Linda is saying, I really like it. So the summary, I agree with Tony. It helps me think in French. Yep, that, that is the goal. So I'm glad that it works. Uh, Connie is saying, I don't have questions or answers. Thank you for an informative session. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, Linda is saying, there were a few too many things here. Not sure what you mean, but maybe it's an answer to, uh, to Connie. All right. Well, thank you guys for being here with me. It was really, really awesome. I look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Um, yep, that, that is it, basically. Thank you for being here. Thank you for participating and for the messages. And I will see you next Sunday. Au revoir. Have a good week. Bonne semaine.